my experience of philosophy and my practice of philosophy is very international, so it's global in that sense. I've taught philosophy in, I guess, at least three continents and three languages, um, four languages, Hebrew, German, French, and English. I've taught it also in Japan, but that was mostly in English. My Japanese is very, very poor. My education in philosophy was in Jerusalem and at Oxford, and I've had visiting appointments in France for a number of years and in Germany, in Finland, other places in Scandinavia. So. The practice of philosophy is global for me in that sense, uh, in that I practice it in different places and learn from the different cultures different orientations towards philosophical problems. One of the interesting things that I've discovered through the very good fortune of having a lot of my books translated is the way you need to contextualize even philosophical thought, which has often pretensions of being totally universal, the way you need to contextualize it to a local setting, because universal as certain experiences may be, uh, they're always inflected by cultural and social traditions. And I've made it a practice for every translation of a book of mine into a foreign language to try to contextualize my writing to the um, particular cultural background, philosophical and generally cultural, of the country or the linguistic tradition uh, into which the book is translated. That has been also an impetus to learn about those cultures because in order to contextualize my writing, I need to find some connection to the philosophical traditions of the culture into which the book is translated. And that has been a fantastically enriching experience because my own work becomes an opportunity for learning about others and sometimes tremendous vistas of parallel ideas and complementary ideas open up and it's, it's very exciting. You also make through these global exchanges interesting friendships in which you learn a great deal. The lack of deep roots is very essential to American consciousness and it's also part of the impetus of American philosophy and part of the attraction of how you create a Weltanschauung, a worldview, uh, when a long tradition hasn't given you one that's deeply rooted and prepackaged. And America is obviously uh, a country of immigrants, but it's also a country that because of its emphasis on the new and because of the mixed nature of the backgrounds of the people here, and maybe because of some dark sides in its history, like genocide for instance, has wanted to not wipe out the past, but not make it so prominent. So I think a lot of Americans, especially before the recent wave of identity politics, are comfortable with the fact that they're American, but not very involved with the complexity of what that means and how that American is always hyphenated to something, whether it's Italian-American, African-American, um, Anglo-American, Indian-American, Jewish-American, whatever. Um, the hyphen was for a very long time ignored. And I think one of the interesting things about the wave of identity politics is that it's brought it to the fore, but one of the unfortunate things is that it's only been connected with as it were, victimized or oppressed groups. And that leaves so many of the complex, multiple dimensions of 
an individual American who is, let's say, classified now as white, the complexity just gets ignored and they become a kind of standard or, or a stereotype. So, yeah, I think part of the reason for my nomadic proclivities probably was a basic sense that I was a newcomer here. I mean, neither of my parents spoke with an accent, but my grandparents did. I knew that I was Jewish, which was different from, you know, the norm. And I was a witness to racial prejudice against black friends of mine, and I didn't feel comfortable. And I felt maybe vulnerable because I knew that I was one step away from that, from being a victim of that prejudice myself. So, yeah, American society is complex, mobile, the roots, and also the knowledge of its actual history is not very strong. I mean, we have an expression in America, your history. That's taken as a pejorative. It means you're over, you're finished. What's important is the new. In other places, your history would be a congratulatory remark. It means you're part of something that's established. So America has to really, American culture, it's one of the jobs of philosophy to show the importance of a historical tradition and the historical tradition of American philosophy. There's a kind of comfort and privilege in being an American philosopher now. It wasn't always the case where since America is so important just by being an American philosopher, you're important because you're where the power is. I remember when when William James uh, gave the Gifford Lectures, it was at the turn of the century, he prefaced his remarks by saying that it's very unusual in his experience for an American to speak and have the English or European professors listen. It's usually the case where the Europeans lecture to the American audiences and he wanted to make sure that it's not an impertinence for an American to lecture to, um, I guess, the cultural patriarchs of uh, American culture. By now, things have shifted because of a hundred years of the American century, and we feel it's our natural right um, to lecture to the world about philosophy, about democracy, to impose our ideas of democracy wherever we think fit. And our American philosophical community is very good in general at criticizing our politicians for hubris and imperialism and not taking the rest of the world seriously and not being true to our own American democratic values of dialogue. Sometimes we American philosophers aren't sensitive enough to the philosophical cultural hubris that we ourselves exemplify in promoting American philosophy, which is fine, but also not recognizing that we should learn as much as we can from the other philosophical traditions and try to engage them in their language and in their interests which go beyond the interests that are expressed in terms of, let's say, continental philosophy in this culture, which is in many ways very different from continental philosophy as practiced on the continent. It's its own sort of homegrown American variation, you know, which is fine. What I would argue for is more integration into what's actually happening on the continent. And for that, there's um, effort that needs to be made in linguistic outreach.